Well, uh, this is part two of our data protection conversation. If you haven't listened to the first part, don't worry about it because I was kind of rambling. But uh, to recap, there's super important legislation in the United States Congress. Uh, it will be transformative over the next several decades. There are so many ways our data is used against us already. Um, the, for example, uh, are your, not just the data you agree to share with an app. It's not just, oh, I signed some, I, I know I agreed to some click through agreement that lets them use my data for like targeted ads or whatever. Just the way we interact with our phones, like just the way you use the app, they study and they use that to engineer apps to make them addictive so that you can find yourself using an app when you would prefer to not be, when you would prefer to be doing something else. They uh, engineer apps to manipulate our emotions because social media companies have found depressed people interact with social media far more than people who are happy. So they, by controlling the information that they serve us in our feeds, they manipulate our emotions to try to keep us depressed, to keep us coming back, to try to get that hit and to be compulsively checking in on these, these apps. Uh, Facebook has already published studies that they've been doing on eye tracking where they track your eye movement or Facebook users eye movement to find the most effective way of presenting ads to them. Dating apps have found that by making people, particularly men, feel hopeless, like they can't get a date, they will spend more money on features to try to get a date. Uh, and they also have found that if they keep us out of a healthy long-term relationship, we'll keep using the apps. So they design them to encourage you to, let's just say, not settle down. <laughs> Right, to feel dissatisfied. Well, then you'll come, you'll go and you'll get a match and then another match, but you know, maybe nothing long-term because that person is also matching with several other, several other people. And then even if you do end up finding someone that maybe is kind of cool, then you're going to get a notification a little bit later. That's like, Hey, you have more matches. Do you want to see? Yeah. And it'll get you back into the app and maybe question whatever good thing you might've just started because opportunity is still out there and there might be someone better. Yeah. It, they paint this picture of, I mean, because they can control how likely you are, like how many matches you get by presenting your profile to more and more people. So they can just scale back how many, if, if it seems like you have uh, several matches in our you know, not responding, they can just scale back how much they're presenting your profile to anyone. And then if you seem, they seem to be losing you, uh, or they can present your profile to, to other profiles that they know get matched with a lot and that match a lot. These tend to be the worst profiles, mind you. I mean, the, the scammer profiles are going to be pictures of like very attractive people that get so lots of people match with them and then they're matching with everybody so they know that they can present your profile to those accounts they will match and then they'll be able to notify you hey you matched with this really attractive person and That's then just micro dosing hope yes so uh the the point is they're you're, they're using your data, you know, in a way that's absolutely antithetical to your goals. It's clearly used, being used against you. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, the, the more digitized we get, the more absolutely insane this is going to become. I mean, targeted ads are nothing compared to what's to come. The problem is we're on an exponential growth curve for data. The amount of data that we contemplated being tracked, you know, uh, our, our phone calls or whatever, um, 20 years ago, our very short text messages, it was just nothing compared to everything that's going on now, our fitness apps, our food, you know, there's people have everything they do 
uh, connected to their phone, our financial information, our uh, location data, our, you know, lots of our entertainment. And you can use that to recreate every aspect of a person's life. That's part of what's so insidious about it. Even if we think of ourselves as not, as just providing something that's, uh, mostly harmless data. Like we think, oh, I don't care if they know how I interact with Facebook or Instagram or whatever. By uh, analyzing the way we use these things and the time of day and, and uh, the length of time we interact and the ads we, we look at for longer, they can build a profile of us that tells them things that we never imagined. Did you ever play The Sims? <laughs> I didn't, but I know what the I know what it is. You get the you get like the gist. Yeah, it'd be cool if when you were out, if everyone had one of those diamonds above their head, and it would be a different color if they were like available or not. <laughs> and it's kind of starting to seem like companies have like one of those as well as like your status of hunger, like needs, like emotional needs, like even deeper than the Sims ones go, and. To the point where, like, like on The Sims, it seems as though The Sim doesn't really know what they need until it gets really bad. Like, they don't show signs of distress in any of those areas until they get super low, like they really have to pee or whatever. But it seems like these companies are, are actually accessing our data to the point where they know where we're at on those different metrics before we even might realize it. Like, before you even know you're depressed, they know you're depressed. Yeah. Before we know that we are really, before we can acknowledge maybe that we're feeling super lonely, they know already and they're going to make sure that they capitalize on that. It's really scary and it kind of takes the humanity out of us in a way. Oh, it's, it's, it's very scary, particularly when you realize that like Neuralink uh, has Which is? It, it's a company that makes a brain computer interface. They take, they cut a little dime sized piece of your skull out and put a little chip in there with electrons that go in who's doing that electrodes. Neuralink is the name of the who's the people I, I, have no, I don't know any of their names Elon Musk is the CEO of Neuralink but I don't I've never even heard of this so is it like is there a medical purpose or is it just well yeah like I want to I mean it's an incredible technology they, they're they doing it to like help people who are paralyzed and they, they, it's a okay. bunch of really cool stuff and the first people to get it Unquestionably, it's going to change their lives for the better. The concern is, this thing's this technology is going to continue to expand. They they already did a demo of a monkey who's sitting in front of a pong game playing pong, and it's he's using his mind to do it through the Neuralink interface. You can only imagine the complete absence of any privacy you would have if you had something like that, and. People will start having those before the end of this decade, for sure. For sure. It's it's. I mean, the convenience is the draw for all of this stuff. Yeah. And this, what we're talking about, is just the private enterprise, private company side of this equation. This bill, it, it will have huge implications for government surveillance and privacy with respect to the government too. It's such a huge issue. It's we'll probably leave it for another night because. But the implications of that are staggering. Uh, the the infringement on our civil liberties that these bills will enable. I mean, let me just say this one thing. The Biden administration has already announced that they are looking for ways that they can use private companies that coll to collect all of our data that they wouldn't legally be allowed to collect so that they can then, the government can then take it from the companies. They already do that, but they need a FISA court uh, order to do it because this bill will control or, or at least dramatically influence how much data these private companies are able to collect on us. Any efforts by the government to then use that data, like to collect that data from those companies will then be necessarily impacted, right? So if the private companies can't get it in the first place, then the government can't get it from them. Right, okay. But it is, I mean, the ways in which this data has already been used by the government uh, and the ways in which they intend to use it are terrifying. We'll get into some of that, but uh, 
I don't want to uh, go down that rabbit hole just yet. But suffice it to say, even if you are a law-abiding citizen, even if you are generally an open person who has, doesn't have a lot of secrets, there are so many way, reasons you do not want your to lose control of your data. It is terrifying. This is a huge issue. We all need to be involved. And it's important for everyone. Yeah. It's not just important for people who have dirty pictures on their phone or who are doing something illegal or who don't want targeted ads to out their pregnancy. This is really relevant to every single person yeah. in this country and especially people who are not yet born and who are young right now. I have no ability to, they don't even have a phone, but they're already being tracked. Yeah. If you intend to live in this society in the coming years or you care about anyone who does this bill matters and we can't sit this one out 